Ladies and gentlemen from the MGM National Harbor here in Oxon Hills, Maryland, Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Devin Haney Promotions in association with All-Star Boxing presents live on DAZN and Sky Sports, the main event. 12 rounds of boxing on the line, the WBC International and WBO Intercontinental titles, along with the vacant WBA International Championship, all in the lightweight division. Sponsored by MGM Resorts and JD Sports. Sanctioned by the Maryland State Athletic Commission Chairman, David J. Norman. Executive Officer, Patrick Panella. The three judges scoring at ringside, Lynn Carter, Dave Moretti, and Paul Wallace. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Kenneth Chevalier. And now, the officials are in place and they are ready. The fighters are in the ring and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing, pardon me, out of the red corner, the challenger wearing gold and weighing in at 134 pounds. His professional record, 24 victories, including 17 big wins by knockout. Only three defeats from Mexico City. De Ciudad de Mexico, Distrito Federal, Mexico. The former WBO Latino lightweight champion, Antonio Tono And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, his opponent wearing red, green, and silver, and officially weighing 134.8 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 21 fights, 21 victories, including 13 wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, living, training, and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, the reigning Defending undefeated WBC International and WBO Intercontinental Lightweight Champion Devin the Dream Haney. Which way? Facing this way? Right here. Okay. Underneath. All right, look here, just a little bit right here, okay? Main thing I want is a clean break, all right? So body shit don't lift you. All right, watch the head, okay? No body, no, no go best by hole, all right? Touch them up, let's go. Is Devin Haney as good as advertised? Or will Antonio Moran stop this hype train in his tracks? Hey, hey, Devin. Antonio Moran out of Mexico okay. City, Mexico. Vows to walk Haney down, oh, cut off the ring, and beat him up. Oh, oh. Here we go. Haney versus Moran. 12 rounds. Haney vowed to show us something special here tonight. Get the crowd out of their seats. Todd Grisham, Sergio Moore here. Ringside, nice one, two to start things. There's that hand speed, Sergio. Sharp right hand right there. It was blocked by Moran, but very sharp. Haney's been working with Floyd Mayweather Sr. Go watch some of those pad sessions. You can find them on YouTube. I mean, lightning quick stuff from Haney. Devin Haney told us from the fighter meetings, I'm going to hit him with some hot stuff early in the first round. And we're seeing that right now. Good counter jab. Let's see if Moran can use that reach and height advantage. Haney extremely 
really sharp with those punches. He's coming up a little short because of the height disadvantage, but very crisp puncher. A little bit of a tricky fight on paper for Haney. Usually fights guys about his own size, but not tonight. He, he told us this is the first time he's going to be at a physical disadvantage, Devin Haney is. I like that. Against a taller fighter, you got to chop him in the middle right there. If you can't reach the jab upstairs, go downstairs. Hit him in the midsection. I don't think Morant's touched him yet. And at this stage, Sergio, is your defense even more important than your offense? At this stage, it's always, the, the higher you get in the championship levels, defense is just as important as offense, absolutely. The body attack as well. We talked to Haney and he said, my power and patience has been there. Now I gotta work inside fighting and the body work. Been a lot of comparisons between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. In fact, they fought six times as amateurs, three and three. You know, they both like to fight as pros as Haney lands a good one, too. And the big right hand, it was partially blocked, but it was still effective. Yeah, Moran came stumbling across the ring a little bit. And Haney is razor sharp. Upstairs and downstairs, stalking the bigger man. Moran looks bewildered. Ten seconds, step on the bail. A little bit of offense there for Moran. Something perhaps to carry over into round two. Good job. Good job. Okay, only thing I'm gonna ask you is to exit on the angles. Just exit on the angles, right? Go into his hook, right? Work your left hand a lot more. You understand? Stay in the middle of the ring. Stay in the middle of the ring. Stay in the middle of the ring. Here's that laser right hand that I was talking about earlier. The first one was partially blocked, but that one landed right on the button. Moran took it well, though. Well, even though he's a taller fighter, Moran told us he wanted to make this an inside phone booth type of fight, but thus far he hasn't been able to get anywhere near Haney. And when you're as sharp as Devin Haney, it's going to be hard to get inside because you're always going to be second guessing yourself. The speed is too much. Haney used to get in fights as a kid in elementary school all the time. Finally, his dad said, listen, if you're going to fight, let's get paid to do it. So at seven years old, took him to the gym. Eventually, they left Oakland, moved to Las Vegas. And here he is 13 years later. Haney with power jabs right there. There's a misconception that the taller man always has the advantage with the jab, but that's not the case. It's timing. And Haney is timing with power jabs right now against the taller Moran. Good counter left hook there for Haney and throws an uppercut right to the belly. That's what he told us he wants to work on now that he's evolving and maturing as a fighter. Be patient with the body shots. A little bit more success here now for Moran as he gets forward. Haney doing exactly what his corner, Bill Haney, told him to do. Stay, keep this fight in the middle of the ring. Do not get against the ropes. You can see glimpses of what he learned with the, in the Mayweather camp, sparring with guys like Floyd Mayweather, that shoulder roll. Came up short with that right hand. Just beautiful, sharp punching by Haney. Moran certainly looks better here in round two. The first round, it, it's like he just didn't know what to do. Oh, nice lead left hook for Devin Haney. Big shot by Haney. Moran took it well. How well, though? Nice short right hand by Haney in the inside right there. Moran coming forward.
right when Haney sat on his stool, his corner said, listen, Moran is not on your level. Not on your level and keep the fight in the middle of the ring, which is exactly what Devin Haney is doing. Beautiful body shot there by Devin Haney. He rolled with a shot and he came back with an uppercut. I would love to have seen that counter downstairs instead of the chin. Boy, Haney is throwing those power shots with some mean intentions. 10 seconds, stop on the bell. Just laser sharpness by Devin Haney. But Moran not intimidated. How about this left hook from Devin Haney? And he set that up with jabs. He was coming up short with the jab, and he made Moran fall for the jab, half jab, and came around with the hook. Just beautiful, precise left hook there, right on the button by Devin Haney. He's got the speed, Sergio, and he's got that pinpoint accuracy so far as well. Haney, 138 amateur fights. He only lost eight of them. He was born to do this. Sharp counter right there by Haney. Oh, another nice stiff jab. You look at the tail of the tape and you're thinking, how is Devin Haney landing more jabs than Antonio Moran? He's definitely getting more aggressive than we've seen him in the past. It's maybe because he's headlining now. He knows how important it is to put on a show. But yes, a little bit really aggressive, very precise punching on Haney's part. And there's that jab again. It's just excellent timing on his part, even though he's a shorter man. training camp at Nevado de Toluca, which is Mexico's fourth highest peak. He feels like if it goes to the later rounds, he'll have the cardio advantage. Good right hand there by Moran. That's the best thing to do. Whenever you're fighting an elusive fighter like that, that head movement, Three, back, the body doesn't down, move. Back, Aim for the chest, the and that's exactly what Moran did. <laughs> I mentioned Haney's amateur success. Moran, no slouch either. He was 90 and 10. Moran putting more pressure. There's that right hand again. Well, he wants to make it a phone booth fight, but he's got to cut the ring off. I like that right hand that he's landing downstairs, downstairs to Haney's midsection. Because if you can't get the elusive timing of the head movement, downstairs it's not going to move. Kind of like a running back juking and jiving. You don't really want to follow the head of the feet, follow the, work, the waist and the chest. Nice left hook from Haney, but it was Moran who answered back. Look, and there's that right hand again. Antonio Moran's doing the right thing. Landing that right hand downstairs. Moran's not going to compete with how fast the counters are coming back from Haney. So if he can hit the stationary target of the chest or the, the torso, the midsection, at least you're landing something, getting confidence. Now it's Haney coming forward. He caught him with a left hook right across the chin. Let's check in now with LZ Granderson. Hey, thanks a lot, Todd. You know, we've been waiting for Haney to get to this point in which he's headlining for some time. And that's interesting to say because he's so young, but that's because he started using social media to get his name out there so early in his career. You can thank his father for that, Bill Haney Sr., a former music exec, someone who's worked with Aaliyah, Too Short, someone who knows how to use media to build a brand before the brand is even out to the masses. So the part of the reason why we know so much about Devin Haney is because his father's been brilliant in marketing him, releasing tapes of him sparring almost like mixtapes. So by the time he got to be known in the boxing community, he was already well known by a fan base because his father used what he had learned through his years as a music executive to sort of produce his own son as a musical artist. Brilliant marketing. Maybe it's a new model. Back to you, Todd.
Well, Z, he just signed a brand new deal with DAZN, and it wasn't just for Haney to fight there. They signed the entire Haney Productions. You know, there's Floyd Mayweather Productions. There's also Devin Haney Productions. So they've got a lot on their plate, a lot of things they want to do in cooperation with DAZN. Round four scheduled for 12. Lightweight division. Devin Haney unbeaten 21-0, taking on Antonio Moran out of Mexico City, 24 and 3. Well, aside from the promotion, he's taking a page out of Mayweather's book right now because he's he's looking laser with the piercing shots in the counters. Look at that. Look at that one. Like that right hand right there. He barely shoulder rolled, came back with a sharp, very accurate right hand. And there's that Mayweather shoulder roll right there. There's your total punches landed. Haney, 36 compared to just 14 for Moran, who's thrown 15 more than Haney. And look at how accurate he is with those punches. 26% landed compared to 9%. It's all about the accuracy. Good crowd here tonight in Oxon Hill, Maryland. We're at the MGM National Harbor, brand new resort and casino. Beautiful venue here for this fight. Beautiful, piercing shots by Devin Haney right there, but you know what? Moran is not intimidated by the speed. Well, Moran trying to make it the phone booth fight, but Haney's just not letting him do it. That's what speed does. Makes you second guess yourself, but not for nothing. Moran is coming forward. He is throwing some punches, just not landing clearly. And now look at Moran. He finally got Haney where he wanted him. Couldn't keep him there, though. Good stuff right there. And that's the best shot I've seen so far, that right hand downstairs. That's the best shot I've, I've seen Moran throw so far. Stop, stop, stop. Because he's not going to hey, be able to up. capture hey, the elusive Haney. We don't need Haney. kidney shots, OK? Let's go. Flowing for Moran's face. Nose bleeding. See if that becomes an issue later. Hey, hey, give me your glove. Give me your glove. Hey, hey, watch his head on that. All right? All right. 20 seconds to go here in round four. It's been pretty much all Devin Haney, but Moran is starting to come on a little bit, especially with the shots to the body. And this round he has, whether he's, he won it or not, Ten seconds. is Stop uh, the, the question. But yes, this was a better round for Antonio Moran. There's a body shot from Haney. Uh, now you're starting to find him. You're starting to find your range. Breathe. Marcelina. Be active. Don't wait for him. Don't look for big shots. Hit the arms, hit anything. And here's the punch dead on the nose, which started the blood flowing. It was a straight right hand. I'm sorry, it was a left hook that started that blood flowing. Round five, scheduled for 12, lightweight division. Sergio Mora doing the translation. His corner telling him, at least Moran, hit him anywhere you can, just touch him. And that's good advice, to tell you the truth, because look, when you're dealing with someone as elusive as Haney, you just gotta touch anything. But you gotta be careful when you're throwing out those long arms to touch Haney, there's a counter shot just waiting to happen. Just like that right there. Good body shot there by Devin Haney on the inside. Good counter, Chris shot. See, there he goes jabbing downstairs. I want to see the jabs and the right hands downstairs if I'm Antonio Moran. 
Do you have Moran winning a round so far? No, not yet. But uh, the last one was a good round for him. Whoa, and a body shot sends Moran down. He claims his foot was stepped on, but that is going to be ruled a knockdown. That shouldn't have been a knockdown. They stepped on each other's feet. Still on a blow. Give him a hell. Let's go. A body punch landed, but also Devin Haney stepped on Moran's feet there. The crowd ate it, ate it up, that's for sure. But you can tell Moran looks to be 100% okay as he eats a jab from Haney. Well, it was definitely a solid punch that landed downstairs, but if you notice in the replay, they stepped on each other's feet. We'll see that replay at the end of the round. But meanwhile, Haney is stepping his game up here in the fifth. And I'll tell you what, Todd, ever since Mor uh, Moran's nose started bleeding, he's been backing up. So I don't know if he's hurt or gun-shy or intimidated by Haney's speed. Oh, that shot sent saliva sending out in the, in the ring. Speed kills, I'm telling you, in boxing, speed kills. That's where power gets translated from. Haney's not known as a big power puncher, but right now, you can see the effects that it's having on Moran. Hey, hey, upstairs and downstairs. Hey, hey. Good go. Let's try it. Get him up. Let's go. Good round here for Devin Haney. Boy, Moran's getting those hands lower and lower, Sergio. It's those body shots. There's an uppercut. Boy, Haney is timing his shots to perfection right now. There's another one. We are watching a potential future superstar here in Devin Haney. And now he's turning the tables as Moran's body language is not good. Oh, and a right hand for Haney. He can sense it here. But is he going to run out of time? Turn around. Under 10 seconds to go. Here's the knockdown. It was a right hook to the body, but it's the feet that I want. I want you to watch. There it is. The left foot on yep. Moran's right foot, and that's what caused the knockdown. But when everything's in fast motion like this, a punch did land with a body shot. So watch the left foot of Devin Haney. Right there, right on the toe, you can see it. See, it wasn't much of a punch, but when things are going that fast, it's hard for the referee to see it, because that punch did land right there. But I could tell by the way that Moran fell that it wasn't really a, a punch that knocked him down. Well, Moran almost got knocked down clean towards the end of the fifth round. Let's see if Haney continues to press forward here in the sixth. What can Moran do now? What strategy can he employ to turn this fight around? He's, uh, he's, he's falling behind in every category, in speed, in, in sharpness, in head movement. So right now, just the jab and keep throwing that right hand downstairs. That's been his most successful punch. Right there, he threw it to the chest. Total power punches landed in round five. Devin Haney was 17. Moran it's, with five. It's intimidating when you're dealing with a fighter as accurate as Haney. I mean, every punch is piercing on his part. Stop, stop! Step back, both of them. Hey, hey, step back. Here we go. Sneaky body shot by Haney, and he said he wanted to work on that with the sneaky body shots. Good left hook, a lead one from Haney, then downstairs to the body. Just beautiful counter punching. Mayweather esque right there. And Moran just can't get out of the way of this line of fire from the 20 year old Devin Haney. This is impressive stuff on Devin Haney's part. Look at that body shot right there, Todd. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Beautiful body shot. That hurt Antonio Moran, in my opinion. You can 
can see Haney's, or excuse me, Moran's keeping his right hand a little bit lower, made to protect that rib cage. No, that body shot got him, and that, he's gonna lower his arm, so that's gonna give Devin Haney a chance to land upstairs now. Hey, keep your head up, it's too low, it's too low. Moran's face showing signs of war. Haney looks as fresh as the daisy. Leave his head alone. That, that power jab has been the most impressive thing on my, in my opinion. He's been timing Moran coming in, the taller six foot Moran, and he's getting out jabbed by the shorter Devin Haney. It's a power jab. Break, break, step back. Don't punch, don't punch. Step back, step back. All the great body work may be a product of Haney's last trainer, the Hall of Famer Mike, the body snatcher McCallum. Excellent point. Oh, boy. Done. Just slipped around and then threw the jab. Perfect. That's been the most impressive punch, in my, in my opinion, that jab, that power jab. Are you, you, you doing what we said we wasn't going to do? Going straight in on the angle. Counter. Counter him and step over. I mean, I'm... Hey. Thank, thank you. Faint, faint, and then step over. Just faint, step over, faint, step over, step over, and then go. Just tack him on the hand. Nada más a buscarlo. Tú se sigue trabajando con tu mano adelante y buscando tu centro de ring. Pa que venga a ti. Me entiendes? Ya tú no salgas más a buscarlo. Get in the middle of the ring. Do not, do not get against the ropes. Oye, no le caiga más atrás. Pero no voy a estar así tan por nada. You know, surprisingly, Devin Haney's corner doesn't seem to be too happy with what he's doing so far. Are they maybe just looking for perfection at this point? I think they're looking for the stoppage. They, they can actually get the stoppage because he's doing everything right right here. He's hitting around with everything. I think more body shots is what's going to get that knockout. If they are looking for the knockout, it's going to be with the body shots because he did hurt Moran with the body shot in the last round. Oh, there's a power jab. I like to see Haney do the shoulder roll and come back with the counter with body shots instead of the head. Moran is taller and he is longer, but look at the jabs landed through six rounds. 29 to seven. That's the most impressive thing I've seen so far, and it's a power jab. That's what got Moran bleeding. There it is again. How do you throw a power jab compared to just a jab? Well, there's different types of jabs, and a power jab is you actually want to land it uh, when your opponent's coming in with his own momentum. There was a power left hook for Devin Haney. Turn him over, turn him over a little bit. Beautiful work by Haney getting out of that corner. His trainer, Bill Haney, and father wants him to faint more, and the reason they want him to faint is because Moran is coming in doing the right thing, landing some punches, but by feigning, you're going to be second-guessing yourself, and that's when you land with speed. Good body shot for Devin Haney. Everything is working so far. We're past the midway point here in Oxon Hill, Maryland. Good counter punch into the body on Haney's part, just like that right there. Exactly what I want to see from him. If they want to get that knockout, it's going to be to the body. Don't hold him. Don't use your shoulder either. Or like you said, faint to the bottom body when Moran drops his hand, then go upstairs. Yeah, you're, you're going to see that happen, especially if you start hurting him to the body. Haney's that fast. He'll turn a, a, a jab to the body just like that and turn around to the left hook. Catch Moran off guard trying to block that jab. Kind of like Floyd Mayweather caught uh, Daryl Morales. I mean, I'm sorry, Corrales. He will jab upstairs, downstairs, and then he'll come around with the left hook, catching him off guard. How frustrated must Antonio Moran be right now? There, there's a left hook right there. Oh, Sharp boy. left hook with the right hand. One, two, and now Haney's got that fire in his eyes. A one hitter, quitter. Devin Haney, a walk-off home run. The dream continues for the 20-year-old sensation.
station. And it was a body shot that did it. The body shot caught his attention, came upstairs with a haymaker that landed dead on the chin. He promised something special, and he delivered. Wow. Let's hope Antonio Moran's all right. But that was a highlight knockout by Devin Haney. Incredible. There are literally people crying ringside in Antonio Moran's corner after seeing that shot land from Devin Haney. That was as violent a right-hand knockout as you will see in this weight class. That was an overhand right that got set up by body work. It was the body shot that caught Moran's attention, brought the arms down, that set up that overhand haymaker on Devin Haney's part. Ladies and gentlemen, you have certainly witnessed a knockout of the year contender from the dream, Devin Haney. Against a man that's never been knocked out. You can see Antonio Moran, eyes are open. He's moving, he's blinking, which is all good news. Muted celebrations now from Devin Haney's camp. But my goodness. If you're another lightweight watching this right now, what do you think about Devin Haney? Devin Haney is the real deal. And everyone in Haney's camp knows that, and he just proved that on the big stage. Lightweights, beware. You've been a part of hundreds of fights in your life in the gym. Obviously, as a pro, as an amateur, you saw ringside called hundreds of fights. Where does that knockout rank as far as violence? That's a knockout of the year type fight. So let's hope Antonio Moran is okay because he's still on the canvas. But those type of knockouts are brutal. Those are the type of knockouts where you get carried out on a stretcher. So let's hope Antonio Moran is okay because it was a brutal overhand right. Well, as long as his eyes are open, it's good news. Once you know you see a fighter close his eyes, obviously that's when it gets really, really serious. The good news is that he moved his head up, so that means his neck is okay. So the main thing you want to worry about in knockouts like that is a fighter's neck. So right now he's picking up his head. That's a good sign. And Devin Haney doing the classy part, not celebrating too much. That shows a lot of class and respect by Devin Haney. But what a debut by Devin Haney on the zone. They wanted a sensational performance. Well, you might have just got knockout of the year right there. Antonio Moran now sitting upright as the EMT is now in the ring. They're trying to get him up to his stool here. But he is talking. He's moving his jaw. And now, get ready, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to show you a special, special moment in the career of Devin Haney. And it was that left hook that caught him around the glove. That body shot right there caused that overhand right to land. It was a right hook to the body because he was getting hurt. Antonio Moran was getting hooked to the body. So that right hook downstairs set up that brutal and devastating overhand right by Devin Haney. That shot right there set up this shot right here. Boom! Right on the chin, out. There was really no need for a count. It was over as soon as that right hand landed. He is a scary man. He's hard to hit. He's super fast, and he's got that kind of one punch power. Hard to hit and a hard puncher, as we clearly saw. Those are the two most devastating, scary things if you're a boxer puncher. He promised, he delivered. Devin Haney, 22-0 with 14 knockouts. He's only 20 years old. What a debut on the zone for Devin Haney there. Incredible. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kenneth Chevalier,
calls a halt to the contest without counting the winner by knockout victory at two minutes, 32 seconds, round number seven, and what will be a candidate for knockout of the year? Now a three title champion, WBC International, WBO Intercontinental, WBA International champion, still undefeated, Devin the Dream Haney! That was the special thing he promised us tonight, and it's great to see Moran up on his feet, shaking hands with Devin Haney, who tonight lit a fire in the lightweight division.